Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. <laughs> so today we're going to keep on keeping on. We've, uh, we've, we've started our Sensor Robot 20. We got the first, uh, the first project done yesterday. So uh, this is project number two. It's, um, it's a darkness alarm. So it's similar to yesterday's. Uh, yesterday's circuit, the first of 20, um, uh, was a brightness detector. So we detected when things got bright. This circuit is a darkness detector. So it'll detect when things get low. So we'll pop you over to the booth and we'll put the project together. Then once that's done, we'll bring it over here to the bench and we'll have a look at it. Let's get on with it. Here we are in the booth. We're about to uh, put together our, our second project from our uh, Sensor Robot 20, also called our 20M1. The second project is a darkness alarm. So uh, our previous project, which I'm just dismantling here at the moment, our previous project was known as a brightness alarm. This is a darkness alarm. So basically the opposite. Um, I'll tell you about that in just a second. So I suspect I'm gonna get quicker at this as I get more experience with it. So I, uh, I still don't really know what I think about these new wires. They're not so bad, but I think the, uh, the 10 in one had slightly better wires in my opinion. Uh, give me one second. I'm back. I just went to grab these other wires, which I had over on the other bench. So, all right, well, uh, I'll just throw you over to, um, the book can and let's have a look at the instructions for this uh, project. This is project number two, the darkness alarm. What it does, this variation of the previous project uses the CDS cell to sense lack of light. When no light hits the cell, its resistance is high. After you complete the wiring sequence, adjust the control so that the buzzer stops buzzing under your present light level. This is the threshold level. Then turn off the lights in the room. The buzzer sounds to signal the loss of light. How it works. When you reduce the falling, <coughs> sorry, when you reduce the light falling on the cell, the resistance of the cell increases. The voltage on the base of transistor Q1 also increases. Then Q2 conducts electricity. The transistor turns on. Because Q2 has turned on, Q1 also turns on because of the circuit arrangement. Then the A-stable multivibrator circuit in block two lets transistor Q5 turn on and off at a certain frequency. The transistor Q4 is also on. This lets current flow according to the frequency of Q5 to the one kilo ohm resistor connected to Q5. This generates square wave voltage that starts the buzzer sounding. When the cell senses a high level of light, the buzzer is silent because the resistance of the cell is low and the voltage on the base of Q1 is also low. As a result, Q1 and Q2 remain off. The A-stable multivibrator circuit begins to create a series of pulses as shown in the illustration of a square wave shown earlier in this guide. It automatically changes its output from high to low and from low to high. It is only switched off when Q3 is turned off. This happens when the 0.47 microfarad capacitor discharges. This changes the voltage on the base of Q4 to minus. When the negative voltage from the 10 kilo ohm resistor connected to the base of Q4 is discharged, transistor Q4 is turned on for a period of time based on the arithmetic product of the 10 kilo ohm resistor and the 0.047 microfarad capacitor. The voltage of the base of Q5 is changed to negative or minus and Q5 is turned off. As a result, Q3 and Q4 are turned off, on and off, repeatedly. There you go. So uh, let's throw you over here, and we'll um, and we've got our uh, instructions in the in the top right, so you can follow along. And we're just going to wire this guy together. So here we go. One to three. That seems to be a pretty common start. Wiring in the positive power supply to the uh, control switch. That's a good way to start. Still getting the hang of these new wires. They are quite different to what we were using before. And then we've got two to 14. Two to 14, where's 14? Over there, that looks like a blue. So that's taking the negative um, power over to the CDS cell, which is of course the light sensitive component. And then we've got 14 to 34. Now where's 34? All the way over here. That's another blue guy by the looks of it. 34 and 14. All right. And then we've got 34 to 38. Where's 38? Down here, it's the emitter of one of the uh, NPN transistors. So I think a white wire will do. So that's the, uh, the resistor connected to the uh, base of this N NPN transistor. <coughs> Gonna connect it also to the emitter. It's confirming that's 34 to 38, that's right. And then 38 to 42. So we're coming down here now to our second block of capacitors. Oh, sorry, um, transistors. 
42. And then we've got 42 to 48 wiring in our transistors down the bottom here. And then we've got 5 to 15. So 5 is uh, one end of our variable resistor. And 15 is the other side of our CDS cell, which is our light sensitive resistor, which is pretty much the sensor in this project. Uh, everything else is not a sensor, not really. Um, 5 to 15 is done. So we've got 6 to 30. Now 30 is here. Okay. So that's the middle of our control uh, variable resistor uh, down to another one of our um, resistor and transistor pairings. That's the 33K side goes through to point 33, which is the base of our transistor. Uh, th that, that's already connected, that transistor and that resistor, they're connected at this point. Uh, that was 6 and 30, and then we've got 7 and 60. So 7 is the other end of our uh, variable resistor. And 60 is, is it all the way down here? Not quite. There it is. Oh, it's part of our 470K. Um, uh, it's the 470K resistor. 7 to 60. Not quite long enough. I'm going to go yellow for this guy. Okay, 7 to 60. All right. And then we've got uh, 9 to 62. 9 to 62. I'm going to go yellow for that one as well. Maybe not necessary. This is the uh, the, the piezo buzzer into one of our transistors down here. 9 to 62. Ah, oh, yes. We saw a similar transistor in the previous um, circuit. This basically controls the, uh, the speaker. And then we've got 62 to 50. So where's 50? Over here. It's the 1K resistor. So let's put that in there. 50 and 62 all right and then we've got 31 to 37 where is 31 oh this is the one that hides difficult to see 31 and 41 they're hard to see i'll get the hang of that i reckon so that's 31 and 37 37 is the collector of q2 i think a white wire will get us between there and there so. oh yeah and then we've got 37 to 63. So that's going to jump over to the other side of the board here. 63, it's the emitter of Q5. And 37, I believe it was. It was 37. 37 to 63. And then we've got 32 to 36. 32 and 36. Okay, that's there and there, which is uh, the emitter of Q1 to the base of Q2. Okay, so that's our Darlington transistor set up again, same as before, 32 to 36. It's 32 to 36. All right, and then we've got 41 to 67. Where is that? 41. Oh, that's the tricky one that's hard to see. 41 to 67. 67 over here. It's our um, ceramic capacitor. So that's the uh, the, com the collector of Q3 over to uh, the ceramic capacitor. <coughs> okay. 67. And then uh, 43 to 70. So we've got 43 here and 70 here. Okay, that looks like a blue wire as well. 43, which is the uh, the base of this NPN transistor, over to our ceramic capacitor. capacitor. Um, okay, and then we got 45 to 44. 45, which is, where is 45? There he is, 45 to 44. They're right next to each other, aren't they? So uh, that's um, feeding back to the base. This is our multivibrator again. This time when I vary the 
these resistances and I will do that this time because I'm modifying the right part of the circuit it should change the oscillation frequency of course if you watch the previous video video I made a big mistake and I I tried to change the resistances in the Darlington transistor I didn't change the resistance in the multi vibrator so of course it didn't work um, it actually behaved exactly as you would expect it would if you change the Darlington which is the control circuit um, then you are either going to completely break it or just short it out altogether which is exactly what happened anyway so we've connected uh, 45 to 44. We want 44 to 40. So we're just connecting all these along here. This is putting together the uh, A-stable multi-vibrator part of the circuit, which is what controls the speaker for the buzzer. That's 44 to 40. And then 40 to 39. 40 to 39. Now, I might have said this already, um, but just bear in mind that uh, the, the transistor and the resistor here are actually connected together at, at these points. They're actually connected to each other. So uh, that's why sometimes you won't see a wire because there's not, not the need for one if that's the only connection that's called for. All right, so that went over to 39. We're gonna do 39 to eight. Where's eight? Up there. All right, it looks like a blue wire to me. So 39 down here. I've knocked one out. 39. To eight and then we've got eight to four okay so that's uh just uh picking up the power for the circuit there so it looks like all the power for the circuit comes in through this uh this uh variable resistor while we're here i'll just make sure he switched off he is off that's good uh eight to four i was 39 to eight Eight to four. What have I done? I did the wrong thing. Lucky we figured that out. So it's 39 to eight, and then eight to four. Eight to four. Okay. Okay. And then four to 49. Four to 49. There it is there. Try a blue wire for that one. It's four is here. And 49. 49 is one end of the 1K resistor, which goes through down here to Q5. And we got 49 to 59. 49 to 59. That's just wiring in the, uh, the 470 kilo ohm. So we've got our biggest uh, resistor and our smallest resistor. Yeah, on this board, the, the, the smallest uh, resistor that we use is one kilo ohm. There's nothing smaller than one K. There you go. So that was through to 59 and we've got 46 to 68. 46 is here and 68 is here. Okay, so that's the base of Q4 over to our ceramic capacitor. Base of Q4 over to our ceramic capacitor at 68. Of course, there's two ceramic capacitors and they're both 0 0.047 microfarads. 47 to 69. So 47 is here and 69 is here. That's uh, hooking us. This is uh, the multivibrator hooking into its capacitors. And the capacitors are a part of the, the uh, circuit that sets the oscillation rate. It's difficult for us to change those though because there's only two capacitors on the board, but we've got extra resistors up here. So we can wire them in series or parallel down here and that will affect the tone and we will do that because we tried to do it in the previous video but I made a big mistake and I changed the capacity sorry I changed the resistance in the in the Darlington uh, part of the circuit where I really needed to change the resistors in the multi vibrator part of the circuit but since we've learned from our mistake uh, we can get it right this time around so 47 to 69 we just did that and then 69 to 56 uh, oh interesting we're gonna put that 10k um, resistance in okay so it's uh, 69 to 56. 69, 69, 56. And then the last wire is 55 to 61. So we've got 55 here and 61 there. That's the base of Q5. So let's just pop him in there. 55 to 61. All right, well, I'm going to call that assembled. What do you reckon? So let's uh, pop over to the bench and put this guy under the scope and see how he performs. 
here we are on the bench. I'm going to put together. Uh, whoops, sorry, we're going to have a look at our, our second circuit, which is the uh, the darkness alarm. Uh, first things first. Let's put some power in. So we've got positive on this side and negative on this side. Now this is our controller here. So he's switched off. We'll turn the power supply on. That's delivering nine volts. Um, we might as well. Uh, uh, well, uh, okay. We'll put our um, our thermal cam and our oscilloscope on. The oscilloscope isn't wired in anywhere yet. Now this is a darkness detector, so when it gets dark, it should emit a tone. So let's turn it on, and then let's cover the CDS cell. You, you, you hear that? And uh, it, it, as um, per the previous project, which worked the opposite way, uh, the tone is either completely on or completely off. It doesn't vary the tone based on the resistance of the CDS cell. It just uses the Darlington uh, circuit to pick up the feed out of the light sensor and decide whether it crosses the threshold or not. When it doesn't cross the threshold, then it, it sounds the alarm. Um, and this is one of this is an example of, of how you can use a transistor to um, to close a circuit when some other part of the circuit goes open. Um, so uh, should we have a look at the schematic? I'm not sure if you can see that there. I'll just turn him off while we're looking. So um, again, everything is a um, NPN transistor. Um, what's the difference? So this is how they're wired in uh, for the uh, brightness alarm. And this is how they're wired in for the darkness alarm. So what's the difference? Okay, there's no difference in the multivibrator, and that makes sense because um, the multivibrator is still the same thing. It's just a thing. So here and here. Oh, it's confusing. Me. Oh, I see. Interesting. So the thing that's changed is uh, the point at which the the CDS uh, c cell in, in injects its uh, resistance. Ah, of course. All right, so the Darlington circuit and the multivibrator and even Q5, they're all exactly the same as they were in the previous um, in the previous circuit, but the location of the CDS cell has changed. Fascinating. Well, that explains that. Now, I did say that we'd uh, uh, try again adjusting the resistance resistances on the multivibrator to try and get a different tone out of this thing, and we will do that. But before we do, let's just have a look at... Um, at what we're getting out of it at the moment. So uh, let's turn this guy on and give him some darkness. Oh, I was expecting to hear a tone. Why is there no tone? What have we done wrong? Ah, something's wrong. I must have knocked a wire out. 47 to 69, is that right? Yeah, it is, 47 to 69. Right, there we go. 42, 42, 38, 42, 42, 48, 38, 38. Okay, there he is. Okay, that's working again. All right, now we just wanted to put the uh, the probe across the uh, the spit the buzzer so that we can um, just get a reading on uh, its frequency. So we've got a frequency reading. All right, let's turn him on, and the frequency is 1.5 kilohertz, which is exactly as it was last time. Now this time, what I'm planning to do, what am I going to do? We should. Uh, Add in an extra, um, an extra, I don't know, say 1.8K. So I'll just get some yellow wires. These yellow wires are fairly long, so they should do us. So what I'm going to do is add in an extra... One point eight Ks onto this ten uh, K. Oh no, on, onto the one K. Him in there. Now, when we turn this on, we should see the frequency of the tone 
change. So let's uh, lock him out. Oh, he's not on. All right. And the tone is at 1.6K. So it has made a little bit of a difference. Let's, uh, let's take him up and let's move him from 1.8K additional to 3.9K additional. And we're adding this onto a 1K. So it's, so it's a pretty big change relatively, proportionally. Uh, so let's hear that. Yep, there you go. You can even tell it sounds different. 1.7K now. 1.7K. All right, so uh, that's not very surprising, really, is it? That's what we were expecting. You change some of the parameters on the uh, multi, the A-stable multivibrator, which is used for the uh, oscillator, and you get a different pitch out of it. So I'll uh, pop you back over here, and we'll wrap up. So uh, that was the darkness alarm. Project number two. Um, it, uh, in order to uh, to achieve its end, uh, it just put the CDS cell in a different place of the circuit. So that was pretty interesting uh, how that worked. Um, yeah, I have to say, so far I'm really impressed by this kit. We're, we've only done two projects out of twenty, and they've both been brightness alarms. One was a darkness alarm, um, but they're pretty sophisticated circuits. We learnt about a Darlington circuit. Um, we learnt about various types of multi vibrators. Um, uh, I made a mistake, of course. I, I, I should have been thinking more clearly about that. But in the previous video, I modified the wrong part of the circuit to change the tone of the multivibrator. I didn't make that mistake this time around. So we heard the, how the tone sounded different at 1.5K, 1.6K, and 1.7K. Um, you could actually hear the difference uh, in, in, in pitch. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and that's the end of this video. So if you enjoyed that, don't forget to click, click subscribe so that you get the next one. And the next one will be coming out soon. Thanks very much. See you soon.